Okay, so hello and welcome back to another Unity multiplayer tutorial. Today we'll be creating a lobby that players can join, they can then ready up or leave, and then once everyone is readied up, the owner can start. I hope you're looking forward to it, so let's get started. So that we can focus on the lobby today, I've already set quite a few things up, and I'll quickly show it now, but if you want access to it, it's all free, available on the GitHub link down below in the description. So I'll quickly show you around. We have three scenes now. We have a menu scene, a lobby scene, and then the main scene, which is where the gameplay takes place. And if I go to my scenes, we've got, here's the main menu you're looking at now. We've got the lobby here, and then the actual gameplay scene is here, and there's currently nothing in it, but we'll be moving on to that next time. So all we need really right now is a main menu and a lobby. If you're not comfortable creating your own user interface, then like I said, you can go down to the GitHub and just get what I've got here. Uh, it's simply just a rectangle with these four cards for each player. And if I open this up, we've got the four player cards. And each player card is a prefab. So if we go into the prefabs, let's have a look here. Um, we've got the background, the waiting text, and then we've also got this panel, which is disabled. And when we turn it on, it has the name of the player. And then it has also a place for you to put maybe an image of the selected character. And then a little checkbox at the bottom we can toggle over here if I go down. And this can say whether the player is ready or not. And then if I go back, we have these buttons at the bottom. Everyone will have a leave and a ready up button. And then the host will also have a start game button. And that will be enabled once everyone is ready up. If we go back to the menu now, you'll see I have the network manager. And this is just like normal. It has the registered scene names but I've turned off create player prefab so that when players connect to the lobby, we don't spawn in any player object for them. We'll be doing that manually when they actually join the game. And then we also have the net portals and you'll see I have a game net portal, then a client and a server one. And this is just to split up the logic for connection, disconnection, storing client data, all that kind of stuff. Uh, in the previous tutorials, I've done it in a single script. So for example, in the player names tutorial, I've got this password network manager, and this handles the events for people connecting, disconnecting, but it can get pretty cluttered because you've got client specific, server specific, shared, it's all in one script. So I've done it the way Unity does it, which is having a client game net portal for client specific logic, and then the server and the shared game one. There's quite a lot of code here that isn't specific for this lobby tutorial, so I recommend if you want to follow along with me or just understand what this all does, go and look on the GitHub, you'll find it in this project, and we'll be focusing on the coding for the lobby today. The only important bit for today is in the server net portal. We have some dictionaries here storing the client's data, and if we look at what that actually stores, it's their name and their client ID. And then back in here, we have a method called get player data, which will try and basically find for a client ID, it will find their player data. So we can say, uh, get us the data for player two, and it will go find it and it will return their name, basically. And if we wanted more data with this, we could just add it in here too. I think that's it for the setup. So let's head over to the lobby scene and we can focus on this today. So on the lobby UI game object, we have the lobby UI script. And I've already set these references up. So the script right now is just an array of player cards and a button. And all a player card is, is just a script with all the different bits on the UI. So we can toggle on and off the panels, we can update the player's name text and their toggle and all these kind of things. So, so far I just have all the data in here for both of these scripts. So for our lobby to work, we're going to need to sync data to all the different clients so it can display who's in which slot in the lobby, whether they're ready or not, and what their name is. So we're going to need to have a networked variable. And usually you would use a networked int or a networked string, but we need this to be dynamic because it could be anywhere between two and four players in my case, or any technically one and four players as they're joining the lobby. So we need to use a list and MLAPI has a class called network list over here of type, and you need to pass in a type but it can't be any old type. It needs to know how to serialize it. So what we can do is we can make our own type called lobby player state like this. And then to explain how to serialize it, what we can do over here is we can make our actual data. So we want to store a client ID, so client ID, 
we want to store a name. This is what we're actually syncing to everyone. So their ID, their name, and whether they're ready or not. So that'll be a bool. Is ready. And let's make sure the player name is a string, not a eula. And now to actually explain how this works is we need to create a constructor. So public lobby player state. And this will take in a ulong client ID, a string player name, and a bool is ready. And we just need to set all these. So client ID equals client ID. Make sure you get the casing right here. Uppercase player name is equal to lowercase player name. And same with is ready. For ML API to let us create our own data type, we need to make sure to implement the interface I network serializable, like so. Import mlapi.serialization. And it's going to ask us to implement this method called network serialize. And this is how we actually uh, serialize our data. So we take this serializer that it passes us, and we call the serialize method, and we pass in ref, and then the first variable, so client ID. And then you just do this for all of the other variables. So player name and is ready. And there's one last thing, which is we need to make this a struct since this is going to be a value type, not a reference type. And I can zoom out again. And here we are. So we've now created our own data type that we can sync across the network. And the way we do this now is we pass it in here. So this is the lobby player state. And we'll just call this the lobby players equals a new network list of lobby player state. And we have to make sure we've got the correct using sir. There we go. So now whenever this list is updated on the server, it will be synced to the other clients, which is really useful. So let's start off by now writing some methods. So we're going to override the network start method. And the first thing we want to do is say, if we are a client, then we want to subscribe. So lobby players dot on a list changed, and we can give it a method handle lobby players state changed, and we'll implement that method. So what we're doing now is saying if we're a client, when the list updates, do something. And in our case, we want to update the UI. Let's finish off the start method. So we're then going to check if we are a server, then let's enable the start game button because they're the host. So start game button game object dot set active true so they can now see that button and we also want to start subscribing to some events because we need to know in the lobby when players connect and disconnect to then update the lobby so network manager dot singleton dot on client connect callback and we'll make this method handle client connected and we'll do the same for disconnecting on client disconnect callback handle client disconnect and then we'll take both these methods and we'll create them so generate this method and generate this method the final thing to do in start is to go over all the players who are already connected and add them because these events will only trigger when new players connect or disconnect but what about the players who are already there so let's loop over them for each network client and we'll call it client in network manager dot singleton. And we have this connected clients list. So we can loop over all of the connected clients. Let's make sure we have the namespace. And then we just need to call handle client connected manually. So client dot client ID. So this will basically do what the event's doing when someone connects, but it just does it manually for all the people who are already connected. And then we want to make sure we clean up correctly. So let's say private void on destroy. So Unity will call this when this object gets destroyed. And we just want to unsubscribe from the list. So unsubscribe, make sure we change it to a minus. And then we can say if network manager dot singleton. So if the singleton still exists, then we want to unsubscribe from these two events. And this mainly happens when you stop running the Unity editor and it will stop you getting errors about memory leaks or you know things not being unsubscribed correctly. So just make sure we unsubscribe from all our stuff. We then want to make a method to check if everybody is ready. So let's make a private bool is everyone ready. 
And what it's going to do is it's going to say, well, let's check how many players are in the lobby. So lobbyplayers.count. If that is less than, in our case, two, we'll just hard code it to be two for now. Return false, because there aren't enough players. And if there are enough players, we then need to make sure they're ready. So for each player in lobby players, let's make sure we put var. For each player in lobby players, if that player is ready, so if the player's not ready, then return false. But if we get to the end of this method, it means we have enough players and they're all ready, so return true. And now we can deal with people connecting and disconnecting. So let's take the connect method, move it above the disconnect method, and rename the parameters to client ID. And we want to go find the name of this player that has connected so we can put it in the list. So we'll say here, server game net portal, import the namespace, dot instance dot get player data. And if you pass in their client ID, you get back their player data. So var player data equals that. And then we need to make sure it actually exists if we succeeded in getting it. So if not player data dot has value, then return. And this is identical to doing uh, is equal to null, but it's using uh, C sharp nullables. And this isn't the time to get into that. So go, go look up C sharp nullables if you don't know about this. But this is basically the same as saying if it's equal to null return. If it's not equal to null, then let's add to the list of lobby players a new lobby player state. And we'll say here, the first parameter is the client ID. The second is their name. So player data dot value dot player name. And whether they're ready or not, we'll default that to false. And then put the semicolon and we're done with this method. Then for disconnecting, we just want to loop over, so make a for loop, loop over all of the lobby players dot count. And we're going to say here, if lobby players i dot client ID matches the client ID for the person who disconnected, then lobby players dot remove at i. So just remove that player and break because we can stop there. It's pretty simple for disconnecting. And the next thing we need to do is give the players a way to actually ready up. So we'll make a method here, private void, and we can call this toggle ready. And it's a server RPC. It's an RPC we're going to send to the server. So we need to, on the line before, put the attribute server RPC. And in our case, we're going to say require ownership equals false. So anyone can call this method, they don't need to own it. But anyone calling it, we still need to know who it is that called it. So what you can do is you can write server RPC params, and we'll just call it server RPC params equals default. This is the syntax. And what we can do now is anyone can call this method and we can read server RPC params dot receive dot sender client ID. And this is the ID of the person who sent the request. So this lobby script, it's not like each person has their own instance of this. It's like a shared one. So anyone can call this method, but we still can find out who called it, which is useful. Because with this, what we can do, let's just get rid of it for now. We can say, when someone readies up, let's go over all of the players in lobby players .count. Go over all the players, and if lobby players i, if their ID is equal to the person who sent the request, then we need to update their data because their name stays the same, their ID stays the same, but whether they're ready or not gets toggled from true to false. So lobby players i equals a new lobby player state where the client ID stays the same. So lobby players i dot client ID. The name stays the same. So lobby players i dot player name. And then the is ready changes. So we'll just set it equal to not lobby players i dot is ready, which will just toggle it to be the opposite of what it already is. The next method we'll make is a way for the host to start the game. So we'll make a server RPC here that doesn't require ownership again. And we'll call it private void start game server RPC. And we'll take in the params again. 
equals default. And while this isn't necessary when the host is the only person who can start the game, this is a good way to get ready for when the, uh, anyone can start the game. So, for example, if you have dedicated servers and you might want it to be the first person who joins the lobby can start the game, you would change this logic accordingly. But for now, we're just going to say if the person calling this method does not equal our ID, so network manager dot singleton dot local client ID, then return. So this is saying if any of the other clients try to start the game, then return. But if not, then it means the host is trying to start. So then we'll say, well, if not everyone uh, is everyone ready, here we go, then return. So we need to make sure everyone's ready. And if they are, then we can call server game net portal dot instance dot start game, which is a method I've already created. Like I said, you can go find it on GitHub. It's literally just set a bool to true so people can't keep connecting and then load the main gameplay scene. Only a few more methods now. This is quite a long tutorial. We've got to make methods for all the buttons. So public void on leave clicked, public void on ready clicked, and a public void on start game clicked. So for leaving, we say game net portal dot instance dot request disconnect, and that will handle the whole disconnection flow. Then for ready clicked, toggle ready server RPC. And for start game clicked, start game server RPC. And then finally, the handle lobby player state changed. We'll say here lobby state, we'll just change the name of that. And we want to now go through all of the player cards on the UI. So for every lobby player cards.link, we want to say if there are more players, so if lobby players.count is greater than i, that means that we should populate this card. And if it's not greater than, then it means we shouldn't because it means we don't have enough players. So what we can do here is we can say lobby player card or cards lobby player cards i dot and we don't have the method yet but we'll make a method called update display and we'll pass in the data for lobby players i and then we'll say else here so if there aren't enough players we then want to turn off that card so lobby player cards i dot disable display and then one extra thing needs to happen over here if you are the host, so if is host, we also want to update not just the cards, but also the start game button. So we'll say start game button dot interactable equals is everyone ready? That method earlier that returns a bool. So if everyone's ready, the button will turn on. And if they're not, then it'll turn off. And now we just need to make these two methods, the update display method and the disable display method. Let's go over here now and we'll just make these public voids. And all we need to do in here is say, well, to update the display, player display name text dot text equals lobby player state dot player name. And then is ready toggle dot is on equals lobby player state dot is ready. So just update all the UI elements to match the state. Uh, waiting for player panel dot set active false and player data panel dot set active true. And then we just take these last two lines. And when we want to disable the display, we just do the opposite. Let's turn on the waiting for player and turn off the player data. So yeah, that should be it for the coding. We still need to hook some stuff up inside of Unity and give it a test. And I hope I've explained the lobby code well enough today. Of course, there's quite a bit of code that I didn't go over, which is the um, net portal stuff, which like I said, is in the boss room sample. And it's also in my GitHub. So you can go and find it out and read into how it all works and what it does. But what we need to do now is go into the UI over here, go to the buttons, so the leave button. And when we call leave, we just want to say lobby UI on leave clicked. And then we've got the ready button to do the same thing on ready clicked. And finally, the start game button, hook that up on start game clicked. Make sure this is, yep, it's all synced. Let's go to our scenes, 
go back to the menu scene and we can do a little quick test so we can hit play and we can see if it works for ourselves. So enter name, dapper, host, and you see we get dapper here and if I hit ready it readies up and I hit unready and it doesn't. And because the min players are two, it doesn't matter if I'm readied up because we've not got two players. And if I leave, I go back to the main menu. So let's stop running it and let's give it a build. All right, the build is done. Let's run it in the editor and we'll host over here. So we'll say enter name when it loads. We'll say dapper host. And I'll go over here and we'll say um, dino host, oh sorry, dino client. And when I joined, you saw it join on both, it's synced. And if I ready up, you see the ready up is syncing back and forth. And if I ready up over here, both players are ready so we can start. And if I join as a client over here and call myself dino2, join as a client. Now I'm joined and the host can't start because there are three players but only two are ready. Of course, if I ready up, that does what you'd expect. And all the three clients see everything synced in real time. So yeah, that's it for this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed and found it useful. If you did, then please leave a like and subscribe. If you want to see how all the net portal stuff works, it's on the GitHub and it's also in the boss room sample too, though mine is a little bit different to that. And like I said, that's just all the boilerplate stuff. It's nothing lobby specific. We've just built on top of it. Let me know down below what you want to see next. Thanks as always for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye. But of course, before I go, I've got to thank my patrons. A special thanks to Francisco Lira, Sahila, David McDermott, Evan Maxi, Gabe Torres, Gregory Pierce, Yoris Letter, Katinka Mom, Lawrence Simpson, Malvin, Mark, Mike Miller, Rack, Andrew Williams, Chris Diplock, Theory, and Dario. If anyone else is able to help support the channel monetarily, link to Patreon is down below. If not, there are also links down below to other social media, such as Twitch, Twitter, and Discord. If you could help us out by following on any of those or checking any of those out, that'd be greatly appreciated. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.